Hi everyone, welcome to Finesse Gaming, thank you for tuning in, hope you're all having a fantastic day. On this channel you'll find streaming tech reviews, game reviews of some of the most popular games, some gameplay tips and tricks and hopefully some useful info that will help you make gaming and tech choices. Today's video is going to be a review of the Ampro 2 60% mechanical keyboard. But before we get to the video, a couple of things I just wanted to say. I stream on Twitch and Facebook, links in the description below. I stream as often as I possibly can, so please come and check them out. It'd be great to see you there. And if you do like this video, please drop a like, hit that subscribe button and turn the notifications on. Your support will be hugely appreciated. And lastly, if you do have any streaming tech or games that you would like me to review, please leave the comments in the comment section below and I'll see if I can get around to reviewing them and giving you my feedback. Right, that's enough from me. Let's get on with the video. Roll the intro. Okay, so like I said, today's video is a review of the Ampro 2 60% mechanical keyboard. It's a very, very good keyboard. As you can see, it's quite compact. It's a 61 key keyboard um, and it fits on the desk nicely. If you've got a small desk, it's brilliant. It saves a lot of room. If you've got a bigger desk, but you just want a bigger mouse mat, this is kind of the keyboard you need to buy. So this is uh, now quite popular. A lot of people are swapping to these keyboards and you see more and more of them coming onto the market. So there's quite a few out. This one, in my opinion, is one of the best ones that you can buy. So. All the different features we're going to go over now so we're going to go over some of the positives and negatives it's not all positive unfortunately but it's pretty good okay um so first of all all of the keycaps these ones are aftermarket ones the black ones that come with it are double shot pbt look great on the keyboard these ones just kind of let a bit more light in and they went with my setup a little bit better now you do get these uh, bottom ones down the bottom here i think you do get a couple of side right changed and you do get these there as well so they come with a the keyboard they uh, well let's say they're free but they come with a keyboard and they do look great it's a great little addition to have so we're going to go over the features for the hardware first and then the software in a second the key features on the hardware you've got a usb type c port at the back there which is pretty good it's okay the cable isn't the best it's only available in red which doesn't suit everyone's setup um i don't mind it i don't use it that much actually wired but uh, it's okay it's, it's good for just charging but it isn't the best cable it's quite stiff it's not very agile um, so it's not the best cable which is a negative but like I said if you use it wirelessly and there is hardly any latency if any when you use it wirelessly but yeah if you do use it wired the cable isn't the best so the keyboard itself weighs 635 grams which is quite heavy for the size of it it's almost as heavy as my old Razer keyboard which is a full-size keyboard so you can tell that this is made of high quality materials there's quite a lot of weight to it you can feel it when you pick it up it does stick to the desk well when you have those four feet there as well so there's no movement really on the desk, which is one very big positive to it. After that, it's a very clean looking keyboard. You've got no markings on the front, you've got no markings on either side, and you've got no markings on the back, which is good. On the back of the keyboard itself, so on the bottom of it, I should say, the only things you've got there are the number one over here and the AMP Pro in the middle, and you've got the four feet on the edges there that keep it in place on the desk. There's not really any bend whatsoever in the keyboard. If I try and move it, there's very little motion. Okay, put a bit of force in there, there's hardly any, if any, movement at all. And the last thing on the back there, you've got, if I can focus my camera, which I probably can't. Nope, <laughs> that's the USB, um, sorry, not USB, that's the Bluetooth switch, you can switch it on or off. Um, like I said, I use it mostly wirelessly, so I leave that on. And it's got plenty of battery life, which you'll see in the software in a second. So, some good features here on the keyboard. So the switches that I have on here are the Gateron Brown. So this is now available in the Gateron switches, the Kale or the MX Cherry, which is, uh, I think they're quite new to this now. Um, but yeah, you can buy any of them, they're very good. I went for the Browns for gaming and typing, and, and I must say I went from a Razer keyboard to this one. I had the Razer Mecha Membrane switches, and they are completely different. They're much, much lighter to press. There's a 45 gram actuation point on these. The Razer was almost double that, okay? So it's a lot, lot lighter. If you come from a blue switch to this one, again, you'll notice it's a lot lighter this is to use. Personally, I would be going for this uh, Brown switch, whether it be the MX switch or the Gateron or even the Kale, but this or the Reds probably be my choice of the two, um, simply because of the um, noise level and how easy they are to press. So for gaming or typing, it's great. I will say though, if you do type very fast and you come from a keyboard with a blue or a Mac and membrane switch maybe, you might make some mistakes on this, okay? I've noticed, so they're so easy to press. As you're moving your hand around, you sometimes just lean on the key and don't mean to and you press it. So it does take a bit of getting used to, You've just got to make sure you are very accurate to be saying pressing the keys. But once you get used to it, there's no problem whatsoever, okay? But if you buy it for typing only, probably not the best. Go for a blue switch or something like that. But uh, as it is for gaming, I can't fault this. Gateron Browns are a brilliant switch. 
So the two negatives, I've gone over kind of one here with the USB, it's not the best. It's more of an annoyance than a negative, okay? But the one negative is that this isn't adjustable. So this height is the height that it's coming with, you can't change that, okay? There's no feet at the bottom to change it. When it sits on the desk, for me, it sits perfectly. So I, I'm lucky, maybe I don't have to. But if you're used to having a keyboard that's, okay, it's on the right angle. If you're used to having a keyboard that's raised, well, that's not the right angle. Where is it? <laughs> you're used to having it raised up a little bit. I give up trying to get this angle, then you're not going to be very happy because this won't rise up, okay? It's going to stay in the same place. But at standard, it's very comfortable. You can see it is raised up a little bit there at the back, but there's no adjustability. So I suppose that's a negative if you want adjustability, but this is going to suit most people. So I can't really find a fault in that. It's more of maybe a negative because it doesn't have it, but I don't need it. And I don't, I don't think a lot of people do need it, to be perfectly honest. Okay, next we're going to do a review of the software that comes with the Ampro 2, which is one of the positives actually. It's a good software, it's very easy to use. First of all, when you get the box, in the box you'll see a little card and that will tell you how to download the uh, the software, which is this here. And once you've downloaded it, double click on there and you need it wired, okay? So if it's got it wirelessly, it won't work. It needs to be wired with the uh, USB Type-C for this to work. Once you go on to it, I'm just gonna go over a couple of the main things on here. Okay, once you go onto the main screen, what you should do first of all before you do anything else is come down to the firmware upgrade and just make sure that your firmware is up to date. So uh, this has been out for a little while and they've done quite a few firmware upgrades um, just to make sure there's any bugs fixed and uh, and uh, everything's working as it should be. So just make sure you come down, do this and then go ahead and continue through the software. One negative on here is the battery and the run time. So one of the things I've noticed on Windows 10, I don't know if this is just on Windows 10 or not, but Sometimes this percentage uh, comes up on Windows as having very little battery left. So I've had a warning about 10 minutes ago saying I got no battery, which was about 30% when I plugged it in. So I don't know whether Windows just sets up for that being 30% and uh, comes up as a warning or not, but uh, there's no way of changing it. It seems to happen when there's still a little bit of battery left. Secondly, when I first had this keyboard at 100%, we had about 42 hours worth of battery. So. I don't think I don't think I have 122 hours at 37%, so I don't quite know what's going on here. So there's something wrong in this part of the software a little bit. Um, but otherwise the software is very, very good, which we'll have a look at in a second. But yeah, usually 37% of batteries are gonna give me about maybe 20 hours, if that, probably about 18 hours worth of uh, battery life. But the battery generally will last 40 to 45 hours. So I use it full RGB. I've got a rainbow effect on the keyboard and I, I can use this for days and days without needing to charge it, which is very good. A couple of quick things we're gonna go over here. I'm not gonna go over everything. Um, we've got the lighting effects down here. So you've got plenty of lighting effects, 14 altogether. Uh, all you do is just pick the ones you want, download them onto the, uh, and Pro 2, and then we use the FN key to move around and see which one we want. We've got macros where we can assign macros to different keys. And lastly, we've got the layout of the keyboard where we can change all the key binds. So this is where we've got the FN1, FN2, and the tap. The tap is where we press a button for less than 150 milliseconds, and you can set this sensitivity to whatever you want. But as you press those buttons for less than 150 milliseconds, these ones here are only the ones I've got set up, so you can move around, you can scroll around on Google or whatever you want to and it will move around the map. So one thing I have noticed, if you play Apex Legends, for example, and you use F1 here to uh, communicate sometimes within other people, then obviously on your standard keyboard, you don't have that key. So we need to maybe work out a way of doing it. It's impossible to reach FN down there and then press F1, which is the way to do it. So that's why I use the magic FN here. So I bind FN1 to keycap locks. And that means that I've only got to go from there to there. So I've got to press both keys though still, okay? Which is a bit annoying. So sometimes if I'm only using this for gaming, I'll use this tap feature, come down here and bind F1 up there. So I've only got to tap it for less than 150 milliseconds though. Now remember, if you do use that key for anything else, maybe you use it for switching weapons or something, you, you will then have to press it for more than 150 milliseconds to get it to work for its original feature. So I would use it on a key that maybe you don't use too much for gaming and then switch it off when you use the keyboard for typing or whatever else. But that's a good feature. It's a good workaround for, for lack of F keys at the top if you do use them for gaming. And yeah, overall, software is easy to use, very intuitive, nothing too difficult. It's got plenty of different features on there, so uh, it's one of the positives of this keyboard. Next, we've got some of the features of the keys, okay? So we've got the FN1 key here and the FN2 key there. So FN1 is gonna use this entire top row as F1 to F9 keys. 
or sorry, F1 to F10, I think it is. And uh, so that allows them to use. And we've also got a uh, delete key and we've got some different options here. The FN2 key is gonna be the one that uses the, and this is how to pair it as well, I should say for um, wireless Bluetooth. So hold this down and you wirelessly connect it on one, two, three, or four, so up to four devices. I've only got my PC mapped to one, but you can connect it to an iPhone, iPad, whatever you want to. And if you hold down FN2 and press no, it switches the RGB off, if you don't want that on. If we press it again, it brings it back on. And if we hold that down and press nine, we can scroll through the different options. So as you can see, there's some very nice ones as we go through them. So these are all the standard colors, just the plain ones. Okay, back to the start. So I use this one, the rainbow, but there's plenty of nice features on there, plenty of good colors. There's 14 altogether you can get. And uh, yeah, it's very simple to do. And if you want to turn the brightness up or down, it's FN2 and then it's the minus or the equal sign. So very, very easy to use. Set it up with Bluetooth, do that, and you've got all your lighting effects. Okay, just quickly, this is the cable that comes with it. So it's only available in red. It's the USB type C cable um, and it's, not bad, good for two reasons. One is that it only comes in red, which isn't to everyone's taste. And two, some of these kinks, because it's a stiff cable, there is absolutely no way of getting rid of them. So when it sits on the desk, it just takes its own route wherever it wants to go, which is a bit annoying, okay? Especially when you've got a mouse that's wired and you've got these two cables crossing over, it isn't the best idea. So that's why I use this wirelessly, because there's no cables in the way. It's a very clean setup then. And the best way to do this is to probably run it through the desk, but I don't want to drill a hole in mine, so. But yeah, not, a good thing with that, although it's not a, a negative necessarily if you use it wirelessly, even if you use it wired and you can get that wire out the way, no problem. Okay, next up we're gonna have a sound test. Remember this is the Gatoron brown switch that I'm using. This is now what the keyboard looks like in low light with the standard black keycaps that come with it and in a second you'll see the ones that I've changed to. In conclusion then, this keyboard yeah, is one of the best keyboards on the market as a 60% keyboard. For the price range and the choice of keys and the features that it has, it's one of the best you can buy. The only downside to it are the two negatives for the hardware which is the USB and the lack of adjustability in height and the small thing on any 60% keyboard that you don't have that row of F keys, but they've worked around with this one using the tap functions and also the problem with the battery life on the software. And when you combine all of the features and all the different options you have with this keyboard, for £85, which is how much this one cost me off Amazon, I would highly recommend this keyboard to anyone who's interested in a easy switch to use for gaming or for typing. Okay, we reached the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like and turn the notifications on. Your support is hugely appreciated for me and my channel. And if you do have any comments, please leave the comments in the comment section below. I'll read them all and take in as much feedback as I can. But until the next video, keep safe, keep gaming and good night.